Alrighty then, we're back. Doing pedophilia and rape. Yeah, this is the pedophilia and rape video. This is the pedophilia and rape phase where we're being very serious about this topic. Yes, because it is a very serious topic. And, and first of all, let's like start with a disclaimer. Number one, this video really is a talking about sexual acceptance um, for people who, who have fantasies about pedophilia and rape. And we do not condone pedophilia or rape. Just saying that. Just saying like, that. Right now. Let's right away. Put let's, that on the table. Because we're going to be a bit lighthearted about this. And we, we also make a lot of jokes. And we make a lot of jokes. Yeah. But we don't we, want to offend anybody. We don't want to offend you. Uh, yeah. If you have had these fantasies or you've had these things happen to you. Just right. putting that on the table. Exactly. So. This is no joke. Right. So, let's talk about this. Let's talk about sex and rape. Let's talk about... <laughs> Too soon? Okay. Too soon. All right, all right, all right. All right. So we talk, We made a video about, about sexual self-acceptance and how it's important to tell your partner what you want to do sexually. And, and one of our friends said, well, what if you want to rape kids? And we're like, wow, you were a little bit of a buzzkill. Mm -hmm. That a slight buzzkill, I have to say. But then my mind got turning because, I mean, I've been reading about this stuff for decades. And he's a bit of a sexpert. I'm a bit of a sexpert, especially with the internet and all. And especially staying virgin until... And staying a virgin until... Yeah, I stayed a virgin I until I was 31. She took it. <laughs> She's the one who got it. <laughs> she hasn't given it back. I'm not going to. She's not going to. So, anyways. So, we, we were actually talking about this this morning. And, um... We were considering that that uh, this this really goes in line with uh, with the fact that a, a fetish that is unexplored persists. Mm -hmm. And if there's any fetishes that are like pretty much like completely unexplored, it is the ones that are so sociably socially damnable that it's like how dare you? Right, like you can't even think those thoughts. And you're an evil person. You're, you're going to hell. Right. <laughs> that. The thing is, because you can't even think those thoughts, and there's no safe place to express that you have these these feelings, they just stew in people, and they just like, they they just turn them over in their minds. I'm a terrible person. I want to have sex with children. I'm a terrible person. Have sex with children. Terrible person. Terrible person. Until eventually, they've told themselves that they're a terrible enough person to go out and have sex with a kid. Right, because they're already so deplorable. Because why they're not? so deplorable. They why have nothing not? Nothing to lose. Right, like you're already such a shit biscuit. So go have sex with a kiddo, and um, we really want to change that because I was reading a book about pedophilia because I've read books about pedophilia, and uh, they. The psychologists who wrote it were, were talking about how you can recognize pedophiles because they love all things related to child rearing. Not just children themselves, but like, they read parenting books. They read baby name books. They do. Like, pedophiles are fascinated with children. They're fascinated with the innocence of children. Mmm, oh, fascinating. And because they're fascinated with, with the innocence of children, they, they develop this this um this sexual desire that is, that is very closely aligned with children and it, and it goes unexplored because the very first thing that you think of when you think am i a pedophile and and believe me i think everybody has at one point in their life thought to themselves at least for a fleeting moment am i a pedophile like i have i have <laughs> yeah we have both thought at least for a moment huh am i and we've honestly considered it for a moment and then i said no, I'm not. <laughs> and then right. I moved on with life. <laughs> right. <laughs> I moved on with life. I was like, no, no. I, the same exact thing with homosexuality. Like, I, I, I thought I'm about bisexual. it for a moment. <laughs> I thought about it for, for a moment. I was like, hmm. I was like, no, I actually don't like the D. I have one. That's enough. <laughs> and I moved along. But but still, he accepts me. Mm -hmm. I do. Completely. But um, the fact is that... that especially with, with topics like, like pedophilia or rape, there's a whole lot of ignorance that happens. And pedophilia is really just a... It's... You're wanting to experience that feeling of love for a child, but you, you don't know how to experience it in a, in a healthy way. And so, and so that's, like, that's, that's one of the root causes of it. And so 
when you when you talk to your spouse about it, or if or if your spouse comes and talks to you about it, what they're what they're really saying is, you know, I I have this I have this this type of love that I want to give to children, but it's it's coming out, it's being expressed in a way that's not really healthy for the kid, or me, or our family. And it's certainly, certainly not healthy for you after you get caught and you're doing 25 to life and, you know, Bubba and Cletus are using your body like a Chinese finger trap for a long time. That sucks. <laughs> so if the, if the question is, should you tell your spouse about your pedophilia fantasies? The answer is absolutely yes. 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 Because the worst thing that happens is that your spouse divorces you and your children think you're gross. As opposed to that which sucks not i don't know that from personal experience but or, i can imagine or or the other worst thing that could happen is just the fact that you would end up ta like taking it out on a child right you know that is that's the worst case scenario i think right. because then you're actually robbing you're you're hurting another innocent being mm -hmm. basically right because of your own misunderstood feelings and right. And when you when you when you tell these things about your to your spouse, and and as the spouse, if you receive them with unconditional love, if you say, even though you want to have sex with children, that you're fantasizing about having this feeling of having sex with children, whatever that feeling may be, whatever you think it is, I still love you. I still love that part of you. The desire to have sex with children is abated because it becomes something that is at the very least loved and accepted. It's a loved and accepted part of you instead of the skeleton in your closet. And you can examine the part of you that's loved and accepted in a more and safe way. And you can way. do it in a way exactly like with role playing. That's mm -hmm. something that's really, really quite... Uh, How many people want to be daddy's little girl? Daddy's little girl. Mommy's like, little boy. We've definitely had role playing of like daddy's little girl for like extended periods of time. We have. We did that because I needed to process through that because there was incest in my family, you know, and uh, my dad is a pedophile. So like I, I'm just going to be right out there and honest about that, you know. So in my family, that idea, um, you know, percolated. And, and there was just this conversation just about incest and mm -hmm. uh, pedophilia and feeling weird and creepy and shameful about that. So, you know, that has been a really humongous wound of mine that uh, I've needed to work through and just, I don't know, just to, to process through mentally. And, and I think that when you have a partnership where you can be honest and open about your sexual desires and mm -hmm. the things that you you have an interest in, um, you have a safe container to explore them in a healthy way rather than uh, in a way where other people are getting hurt outside of the confines of the relationship and mm -hmm. that there's just mess, you know? So you have a place for the playing to happen, for the exploration to happen. Right, and it is an exploration. Because it's a psychic and spiritual exploration. exploration. It's a journey. It's <laughs> yeah. It's it, going into the unconscious. It's go yeah. It's it's going deep deep into your unconscious to kind of to sort out these feelings that have somehow gotten connected with sex. And right. perhaps like you you saw a, a movie that contained a, a really good like father daughter relationship and you got turned on by it or something, and then uh, subconsciously some some synapse started firing in your brain that said small children equals sexy. Mm -hmm. So explore that with your spouse. Explore that. And, and if you're the spouse and, and your spouse comes up to you and tells you that, then love them unconditionally and, and allow them to explore it with you because there's no, no, nobody gets harmed there. Nobody gets hurt. The, right. the only reason that the only reason that there's so much so much pain and suffering around this is because people bottle it up and bottle it up because they think they're so socially unacceptable. They're damaged goods sexually. They're, sh they're, ashamed. they're ashamed. There's deep, deep shame. Yeah. And deep so shame. By healing these sexual wounds and 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 sharing your shame and sharing 
the things that you've been keeping down and inside, uh, you really start freeing yourself right. to be able to actually be more receptive to love from your partner and from other people and your whole experience of life can start shifting because no longer are you repressing these really, really deep-seated secrets mm -hmm. and, and, and painful things inside of yourself. Yeah. And then you're free. And, and then you can just be loving and have love and right. experience pleasure and, and, and you know have it have the experiences you're you've been wanting. And I think you'll find that what the pleasure that you think you'll receive in a sexual fantasy is never the pleasure that you actually receive when acting out the sex itself. Think about your own sexual fantasies and think about the most long running sexual fantasies that you had and how if you've lived them you know that they feel very different in real life than they do in your head. Because the mental synapse that's firing, that's giving you this particular pleasure sensation, when you think about a, a certain sexual act, is not actually the one that's connected with that sexual act. Mm -hmm. It's just the one that you think is. So then when you actually go do the sexual act, you find that it's not fulfilling at all. Con consider serial killers. Consider that people just kill and kill and kill because they kill and they still didn't get that feeling. So they think, oh, I must have to go kill again. I must not have killed right the first time. Anybody who commits a crime repeatedly is searching for that feeling, but they're not actually receiving it, they're not getting it. Mm. Interesting. So, well, let's talk about rape. Yeah, rape. Here, rape. There, 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 there's another one. Rape. Okay, so what is rape? What, what happens? I remember when I was a child, I asked my mother, hey mom, what's rape? And, and she told me, well, no, your mom's cool. My mom's she, way she'll, cool. She'll share. My, my mother took my two sisters to the sex museum in Amsterdam when they were still minors and being like, and that's a dildo. <laughs> <laughs> and this is what it's for. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I, my, my mom I, is, was so very open about, about sexuality and sex. She, she very much normalized it, which is probably why I then, in, as an adult, have really studied it because mm -hmm. it does fascinate me. It's, it's like a total psychological mind bender, what people do for sex. But um, we're, we're talking about rape here, but what is rape except like this bottled up passion, people who can't express their passion, people who are really passionate and they think, well, I, I guess I'm going to have to go and like have sex with somebody who's fighting me. So I can, I can release all this pent-up sexual energy that I have. It's, it's not about the other person at all. Rape, it, it, you know, it's a selfish act. But then when they, when they go off and actually do it, they find that it doesn't actually fulfill the way that they thought it would. Similar to every other fetish that ever was. They, they never fulfill. Sexual fantasies and, and sexual gratification are different. You're never gratified sexually the way that you think that your sexual fantasy is going to gratify you, but you find that you get gratified in other ways that are better when you actually go off and do the, the sexual fantasy in the confines of a, a healthy relationship. And once again, this is something that a prime candidate for role play. You can role play that you're the cable repair guy. You can role play getting raped or being a rapist too. We've done that. We've done it. We have. And it's fun. Well, I mean, I personally, because I like talking about my personal life, I don't like talking about the hypothetical, I personally think that the experience of role playing a rape fantasy is exciting because there is this idea of, you know, being overpowered. And, you know, again, like as a woman who is in really kind of knows how to wield my personal power in life, like, you know, I, I get shit done. Like <laughs> I'm, I'm powerful. Mm -hmm. And I think that, um, being completely like overpowered is like a woman, like the rape fantasies amongst women are actually really common. And I know it sounds like super duper weird, like especially amongst like feminist people. They're women, gonna hunt you down. They're gonna hunt you down. Like, oh no. But like women, especially powerful, strong, independent women, like don't need no man. <laughs> they, they definitely, <laughs> they definitely 
have some interesting uh, submissive desires. And, mm -hmm. you know, this was something I had to get comfortable with in myself. Um, so, you know, the idea of being raped is also like a, a really freaky fetish that women deal with. That they don't talk that about. they don't talk about. Because they don't want their man to rape them, but they And do. they also don't want their, their feminist sisterhood to like right. think that they're like weak <laughs> or like yeah. you know submitted to the patriarchy the patriarchy you know, the patriarchy I'm gonna get you know car. beyond beyond the freaking patriarchy whatever conversation there is still just masculine feminine energy and and I think that a healthy passionate woman seeks out a healthy passionate male energy you know if mm -hmm. if they're straight you know obviously this doesn't apply to everybody but, but it, it applies to, don't, to enough people that it matters to make to, a video to, about to it. To heterosexual couples, there there is this seeking of of this healthy like like mm -hmm. like you know like it's a desire. It's a desire. It's a desire and it just thing. like revs up inside of you, and, mm -hmm. and it just like yeah, wants to jump out. <laughs> it, it does on the other person and dig in and you know mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So yeah, so yeah, I mean, rape is a Rape is like passion, desire, unexpressed for long enough that... And it becomes like this like boiling kettle. like Right. Right. And eventually it boils over. If you leave a pressure cooker on too long, eventually it blows its top. Earlier we were talking about this topic and you were talking about young men and old men as being like younger men and older men. Oh, yeah. So I, I was actually... Um, I was reading a book about the demographic of rapists and... It was um, it was talking about how many rapists are young men, like college age, who typically, I mean, they they their they balls dropped. they put their balls dropped and they they really can't figure it out about what's going on with that and why their penis is pulling them everywhere, including into vaginas. <laughs> My penis pulled me into a vagina repeatedly. <laughs> but um. You know, because they're because they're not yet confident in their own power, they they seek to overpower and mm -hmm. do. You hear a lot about college rape; it's a thing. Yeah, date rape, date, date rape, rape drugs, those date are rape a drugs. Thing. They're a thing. They're college age. They're a thing, and they're college no fun. College parties. You really have to check for roofies. Right. So the the book was talking about that. The book was also talking about. That's not Sky Vodka. At the airport, they thought it was Sky Vodka, and they thought I that we were. my Sky Vodka. They thought that we were total badasses for just chugging it right at the TSA <laughs> checkpoint. But anyways, the other demographic was older men, like in their 40s and 50s, who, are, who also end up being rapists. And I thought that was really interesting until I considered for a moment that, uh, you know, maybe they've had really boring and tepid sex lives, but they've been really afraid of, of unleashing on their partner because they're, they're afraid of scaring their partner. And... Um, because they they were afraid to have the conversation because they were so afraid of being like, hey, I I want to I want to have some rough sex with you. I want to get in touch with my animalistic instincts. Right, I want to get in touch with my animal, my in, my inner beast. Your beast. The beast. Your beast. He comes out. He does come out. Yeah, I got a beast. <laughs> he does. I might seem mild mannered. Actually, after these videos, I don't think anybody's gonna mistake me for mild mannered. <laughs> yeah, good. Because <laughs> you're not. <laughs> I'm not even a little bit. Uh, yeah, he even kills bugs for I me. I kill bugs awesome. for her on her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we live in the tropics. Mosquitoes, they're a thing. I, I, that's, I, I think, all I had to say about rape. Rape, rape, is, rape is, is passion that has been bottled up for a long time. And one of the, the reason that you talk to your spouse about it is, one, because maybe your spouse also likes it and is, is too afraid to talk to you. Two, it can be explored in a safe environment. With role-playing. With role-playing. With role-playing. Oh, the R word. Role-playing. <laughs> you can role-play that. You can role-play being the cable repair man. Role or role-play being a rapist. Or a rapey. Let us know how it goes. Let us know how it works. In and comments. in the comments. Not, no, really. No, actually, Please don't, don't put this in the comments. Don't do that at all. No, no, we, we cancel that. Okay, no. What you want to do is send us a private message and then, like, ask us for access to our exclusive group where we talk about money, power, and sex. 
your money, power, and sex. But not we ours. Hear, we want to hear from you, but we don't want to do it on Facebook for all the world to see your sex life. You know? Right. Our sex life is cool Our because... Our sex life is cool because everybody already knows we're out of the bag, you know? Right. Your sex life, well, you might want that to be you in the bag. You probably don't want your employer or your children, children your grandma, grandma, you know, your, your aunt, Aunt Rita. <laughs> <laughs> aunt Rita's like, I saw you were tagged in a video. So I watched it and you're out of the I'm will. I'm horrified. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, there's a group, send us a private message and you yeah. can join. And if you personally would like to work on your relationship with us, um, we have couples that have been contacting us since we started making these videos and being like, man, I really want what you guys have. I yeah. want to learn more about how this. to have more money, power, and sex. Like, I, yeah. I want to learn this, this idea of having a better relationship, you know? Mm -hmm. Which leads to more money, power, and sex, especially more sex. And I'm telling you that well-sexed people are very successful. We just got my, I just got my hair cut by this gay man who was super fabulous today. <laughs> He and had rhinestone see-through Gucci, Gucci underwear. underwear. And we were talking about it while he was cutting my hair. Right. Yeah. <laughs> this guy was epic. And he has been like, he's done the whole Studio 54 thing back in the day. And, you know, he cut like princesses haircuts and stuff. And this guy, you know, he has sex energy all over him. Like yeah. all over him. And he is ridiculously, so he does not care about he's our money. He's ridiculously successful. He's just doing this because he's like kind of retired. And, and like, bored in and Maui. Bored in Maui. <laughs> <laughs> he just opened up a hair salon. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Yeah. My beloved yeah. got herself like a $400 haircut for, for 50, 50 bucks because he was bored. Yeah. It's pretty fab. So. Yeah. I'm proud of it. Yeah. So anyway, just saying that this stuff is important and mm -hmm. it really can transform so much of your life and it's not just your relationship. It'll go into all these other areas. So we right. want to work with people who are interested in that and you know people who are really looking to go to these other levels of dimension in their life yeah and we know that we've helped other people do it and now we're just charging money for it so send us a private message about mentoring and we will hook you up and we will i hope to see you on skype and just have a conversation and see if we're a good see fit. See if we're a good fit. You know, like no pressure. We only want to work with people who are really ready for us. So yeah. if you think that might be you, send us a private message. We'll talk and mm -hmm. see if we click. Exactly. And if not, we just keep making these videos. Because Enjoy. we're having a fuck ton of fun with this. <laughs> we really are. We really are. Oh, I love this. This could have been a very serious topic. And it didn't. It doesn't have to be like yeah. It, the, it, talking it, it doesn't have to be an oppressive topic. No. So it yeah. just it's only oppressive and re repressive and taboo because nobody talks about it and mm -hmm. everybody feels ashamed about it. And you know what? This is like a shame-free zone. Right. <laughs> These videos and our group and our mentoring—it's all like it's totally shame-free. Shame-free because so we check don't shame, shame ourselves. Check your shame at the door. Check your shit at the door. Check your shame at the door. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, you don't really need to because we're going to talk about your shame and like... Right, exactly. We're unpacking, kind of you know? going to be all about it. So yeah. bring it in and just lay it down and then we'll look at it. And we'll be like, look, it's shame. There it is. <laughs> yeah. Look, it looks like a big turd on your living room floor. Do you want to clean that up? Yeah. Let's clean it up. <laughs> let's clean it in up. In all seriousness, let's clean it up, people. Right. Because a world of lacking sex is a lackluster world. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. We should go create some more sex. We do, right now. This is sex. This is mental sex. I know. We're yeah, sapiosexuals. We're, sa we're sapiosexuals. We're, we, we're we... having sex on camera and you yeah, can't see it. You can't. But it's, it feels amazing. <laughs> you might be able to tell from our smiles. <laughs> and, and, zero chance of jizzing in your pants. It's great. <laughs> All right. What are we talking about next time? We don't know yet. We don't know yet. All right. Ask us a question. Ask us a question. Then we'll maybe, know. Maybe we'll know. And then we'll know and have our next video topic. Exactly. Or we're just going to like keep we somehow, doing the ones that God tells us to do. Yeah, like that's pretty much what we've been doing so far. It's just, hey, hey Jesus, what's our topic? Okay, we're going to talk about this now. And then we do. Mm -hmm. Works great. Awesome. So anyway, talk to you guys later. See you in the group. Talk to you via private message. We love you. We care about you. <sighs> Goodbye.